Yeah, it's not only important, but crucial to have both experimental data and numerical research working hand in hand. So experiments motivate simulations, simulations motivate experiments. There's good collaborative work that can be done in validation. This partnership I view it as like, you know, very beneficial, not only to like both parties, Argon and Convergence Science, but also to industry uh, to enhance the science and the understanding of it as well. There's an old saying that when an experimentalist does an experiment, he's the only one that does not believe his experiment and everybody else believes his experiment. When a computationalist does his uh, simulations, he's the only one that believes his computations and nobody believes them besides him. So back in times, maybe some experimentalists thought that they could live without any modeling, but I would say today any other experimentalist pretty much are doing some kind of modeling work. The reason is because computational uh, models can help you understand your own experiments and also to look at things that potentially experiment cannot look at. On the other side, uh, modeling people may think right, that the model is just what you need and you don't need any experiment, but that's obviously not true. Uh, ultimately, we need to validate our models against experiment, and not only, ultimately what really matters is what is the response from experiments in terms of the actual performance and emissions. Most people would agree that the end goal is to be able to do everything virtually. We're at a crossroads right now where we're moving from experimental to numerical, and the role of experiments now is largely in trying to validate and make the numerical simulations more accurate uh, to try and guide us towards that end goal of, of being able to do everything virtually. Still very critical though that we are able to do the experiments not just for building the models up but also for the final testing of engines and designs once the original numerical design work has been done. Computational research is going to be the pathway to our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is to try and develop engines with better fuel efficiency and better emissions. And the tool that is going to enable that is, is better computational simulations. So what's really uh, interesting about the collaboration with Argon and what really makes Argon a really special facility is they have a very strong numerical and experimental side. So having access to that as a company like Convergent Science um, really helps us push forward our technology because now we can work very closely with their numericists, we can also work closely with their experimentalists and come up with a tool that um, is best in class for simulations. It was about 10 years ago when Convergent Science first offering a commercial product that this is about the same time that we decided we were going to develop our own CFD modeling capability. The choice to, to really start the work with Converge and Convergent Science was very strategic on our part. Um, we looked at all different types of software, uh, different vendors, pros and cons of everything. The conclusion was that we really need to start with, with Converge. So in general, simulations provide a lot more data than experiments. And with the advent of high-performance computing and the tools that have been developed inside Converge, we are able to simulate and get more information, get more physics out of these simulations. So get more understanding. This has really motivated experimentalists here at Argon and across the world to basically improve their experimental capabilities, to measure more than what they were measuring in the past. And Argon has always been in the forefront of like uh, getting the new, uh, experimental data for validation of numerical results, and also like you know coming up with uh, advanced numerical like tools. We having a partnership with like Argon helps us implement these advanced models into Converge, as well as like using the experimental data that they come up with so that we can validate our numerical models as well. We're actually recognized as in the National Laboratory System as the premier CFD modeling of engines uh, laboratory to go to. It started out as a group under my section and it has grown to the point where it was too large and it had to split off as its own group. Um, and that's now a group of close to 30 people. And uh, they, they publish unbelievable amounts of data and, and the worldwide recognition has just been fantastic. Um, and I don't, I honestly don't think we would have been able to grow that fast in, uh, and to get this large uh, without having partnered with Convergent Science in the beginning. 
The partnership between Argonne and Convergent Science is important for my work in particular because a collaboration with Convergent Science and with simulation uh, groups in general helps to keep my work grounded in reality. Convergent Science can tell me what the barriers are to developing improved computational simulations, and then I can design my research program around that information, helping to design experiments that can help to address those barriers. To start off, we have the engine dynamometers, which are not necessarily a unique capability. Every engine laboratory has that. Uh, but it's really the people that we have that you know, enable what we can do with, with that uh, capability. Um, the expertise to do some visualization in the combustion chamber um, is a unique capability. The expertise that we have to uh, do some very detailed understanding of um, emissions formation. To complement the engine testing area um, is the work that goes on at the advanced photon source where we can use the x-rays to really probe deep inside uh, some of the components in terms of what's going on. And that's really a, a capability that's been in development for almost 20 years here now and really has become the, the flagship of our program. Uh, being able to, to use those x-rays to get data that really wasn't available before um, and provide insight you know, that you know, feeds into the modeling. So the x-ray data that Chris Powell and his team have measured uh, using the APS facilities at Argonne really help us to much more accurately simulate our internal nozzle flow and our injector simulations. And again, that's critical because what happens inside the fuel injector really dictates what's going to happen downstream, the subsequent mixing and combustion. And so a couple uh, areas where this has been very beneficial are uh, the needle motion. So we think of the needle moving up and down, but it actually wobbles a little bit from side to side as well which can have a big influence on the hold to hole variation in the injector. So Chris Powell and his team have really done a great job characterizing that. In general, nozzle flow community and the spray combustion community has been separate. And the reason they have been separate is because of the lack of the capability to combine the findings of nozzle flow research with spray and combustion research. So the combustion people would just assume something that's happening at the nozzle exit and start their spray combustion modeling. So if there is cavitation that's happening inside the fuel injector, if the turbulence is high at the exit of the nozzle, then those physics are not input to the models in the past. When you have the scanned uh, geometry, it actually has like a lot of uh, imperfections. Those are, those are real imperfections that we should take into account. Um, so I've seen uh, them publishing uh, data on that uh, and then Convergent Science and Argonne engineers taking that uh, published data, meaning like you know surface and the flow field, and trying to simulate that in Converge. And uh, be, as a result of that, new models has come into Converge software and, and the validation of the different physics. Now, if you have all of that data, why do you need numerics? If you have the correct surface, of course, that's like beneficial. But now experimental diagnostics can't give us all of that flow field information that we want. So when you run an engine simulation, you have to initialize the system with some, some condition, temperature, pressure, species, that type of thing. One thing that you might want to do, and is commonly done, is you want to wash out the initial condition. So you'd run one cycle, let that kind of wash out and, and get reinitialized with, actually, uh, uh, with what's actually happening in the, the engine. So you get better initial conditions for the uh, equivalence ratio, temperature, pressure, that type of thing. So I was uh, running the simulation of my engines and I was running consecutive cycles uh, just to move away from the initial and boundary condition and then I realized that the, those cycles were never uh, like, uh, they were never converged to an average solution. The cycles were never like uh, uh, the, the cycle before or the cycle after. There was some large cyclic variability and that was strange because to me because it was with RANS and not with LES. So we had a lot of interaction uh, with convergent science, went back and forth. At the end, we understood the reason why we were seeing cyclic variability and that uh, there is some deterministic component also, the cycle to cycle variation that our simulation could capture. So even if we were not having the most rigorous or let's say the most accurate approach, which is LES, 
to uh, simulate cyclic variability, we were picking up some cyclic variability. And the good thing uh, of this is that our results were matching experimental observation very well and very nicely. Uh, so in other words, we kind of like uh, show to the community and we were able to publish at the end that runs can capture some of the cyclic variability, in particular for those conditions that are characterized by the more deterministic uh, features. So my involvement was, was writing the original paper that talked about cyclic variability with RANS. It was rejected at SAE. There were three reviews. Uh, one of the reviews said the, the research was fine and could be published. The other two reviews both said it should be rejected. Uh, the, the first reviewer that rejected it said that uh, the concept of predicting cyclic variability with RANS was a trivial concept that anybody that knows anything about turbulence knows that that's possible. There was nothing new to be published, and so it wasn't important. Uh, the other reviewer that rejected it said that the authors clearly knew nothing about turbulence, and everything they were saying was garbage science, and they had a junk code that couldn't predict anything. So therein lies the reason for the paper, is you have some people that are seeing this as being, sure, everybody knows that, and you have other people that are saying this is complete junk. So. That was the reason for the paper, and we continued to push it, resubmitted, made changes, and eventually got it published, and that was some of the, the initial work showing CCV with RANS. Uh, it, at this point, uh, most of industries come around to accept that, but it has been a, a long road, and we've, we've met a lot of roadblocks on, along the way to try and get that, try and get that accepted. So contrary to what you see in the media, engines are going to be around for a long time. So we really have to keep improving them. We have to keep uh, improving their cleanliness, their efficiency, uh, because these cars with engines are going to be on the road for many, many decades to come. All we are doing right today is going to benefit the, the automotive field in particular. Um, we should look at uh, maybe what we were doing 20 years ago, right? So the engines that we have today in productions are the result of research on engines uh, being carried out maybe 15 or 20 years uh, ago. So in other words, all the research efforts that we are making today, uh, we're going to get the benefit probably in 10, 15 years uh, from today. Um, we obviously continue to improve the performance and to uh, reduce the the emission of internal combustion engines. So all the work that we are doing on, on advanced ignition and combustion concept is just targeting higher efficiency, and reduced fuel consumption and cleaner engines. So uh, hopefully we are going to see the benefit. Hopefully industry is going to manufacture the engine and the concepts that we are uh, researching today. So hopefully you're going to see the benefit of the research that we are doing today in a 10 years time frame from now. I mean, I, I uh, frankly, like, you know, enjoy working with the Agon engineers, like, you know, quite a bit. It's, it's very easy to, like, work with them. And all the time, like, you know, you, you have this feeling when you're working on a project, like, you're actually furthering science. Uh, and you're a part of that, which I really enjoy and look forward to, like, you know, doing even in the future.